Hello, Namaskar. Welcome to this lecture on the right to food, meaning and implementation in the international context. 2007-2008 witnessed unprecedented rise in international prices of basic food commodities and ignited looting and food riots in many countries including Haiti, Bangladesh, Cameroon, Egypt, Niger, Burkina Faso and Senegal. This immediately grabbed media attention and rang alarm bells for governments and the international community. In a vital sense, the 2007-8 global food crisis represents a threat to human rights. It reflected a failure of international and national policies to ensure physical and economic access to food for all. It revealed the extent to which people around the world are unable to enjoy their right to adequate food by accessing adequate food or the means for its procurement at all times. The United Nations General Assembly recognized that the right to food was threatened to be violated and resolved to act to ensure that the human rights perspective is taken into account at national, regional and international levels. The Human Rights Council called upon states to undertake necessary measures to ensure the realization of the right to food as an essential human rights objective. The Food and Agriculture Organization adopted the declaration of the World Summit on Food Security in 2009. The declaration affirmed the right of everyone to have access to safe, sufficient and nutritious food and recognized the need to collectively accelerate steps to reverse this trend and achieve progressive realization of the right to adequate food in the context of national food security. The UN High Level Task Force on the Global Food Crisis identified a twin track approach to food security in 2008. It comprised of direct and immediate action to tackle hunger for the most vulnerable and medium and long term measures of agriculture and rural development that strive to eliminate the root cause of hunger, poverty and undernutrition. According to the Cordoba Declaration on the Right to Food adopted in 2008, the right to food can tackle the structural causes of hunger and contribute to food security for all and called on the states to place the right to food at the top of the political agenda regarding food and agriculture. It held that all national and international policies should be guided by a human rights based approach and must respect protect and fulfill the progressive realization of the right to adequate food. Olivia de Schutter, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food 2008-2014, recognized the obligation of states to ensure the right to food by adopting national measures that safeguard vulnerable populations from the impact of increases in prices of essential commodities. Such a national strategy entails identifying emerging threats to the right to food by adequate monitoring, assessing impact of new legislative policies on right to food, improving coordination between rel rel relevant ministries and between national and sub-national levels of government, taking into account impact of right to food and nutrition on health, education, access to water and sanitation measures, improving accountability by clear allocation of responsibilities and ensuring adequate participation of food insecure sections of the population. The first section of this lecture therefore focuses on the definitional scope of the right to food, situating it within the broad United Nations human rights paradigm. The next section analyzes the debates surrounding the implementation of the right to food understood in the context of national and international institutional obligation. States are responsible to pursue activities for implementation of the right to food. At the same time, international institutional monitoring and supervision are significant for ensuring food security and prevent hunger and starvation. The role of the United Nations advocacy in generating global awareness regarding the right to food and establishing concomitant responsibility of the states and the international institutions to operationalize it has been momentous in making the right to food an essential component of the global food security. Let us now look at the meaning and definition 
and the normative con context of the right to food, how it evolved within the United Nations paradigm. Food, a fundamental human need, is inevitably associated with the very survival of human beings and has been gradually and widely accepted as a basic human right. The right to food is not a concern of contemporary origin. Prior to the development of the state apparatus, food issues were entrenched in social relations of each society through a range of redistributive mechanisms. As agricultural societies and the states developed, the state progressively denied the right to food to a substantial section of the population, mainly the producers, while guaranteeing it to non-producers such as priests, soldiers, civil servants, etc. With industrialization, food issues lost specificity as famines and starvation gradually disappeared. However, in developing countries, food crisis still remains a central issue for the rural poor who do not have sufficient land and urban poor who do not have sufficient income and purchasing power. Since the end of World War II, with the proliferation of international institutions and their increasing activism, the right to food has assumed an entirely new meaning and concern in the context of the evolving international context. Human rights concerns were accepted and recognized as international law in 1945 by the United Nations. Until then, such concerns were largely understood at the national level through domestic legal systems. The right to food has been formally and firmly established through a set of international standards including the United Nations Charter, the Universal Declaration on Human Rights adopted in 1948 and the two covenants, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights ICCPR and the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights the ICESCR adopted in 1966. The UN General Assembly has recurrently reaffirmed the right of everyone to have access to safe and nutritious food so as to be able to fully develop and maintain their physical and mental capacities. According to HIT, hunger constitutes an outrage and a violation of human dignity requiring the adoption of urgent measures at the national and international levels for its elimination. The UDHR makes explicit mention of the right to food in Article 25 which upheld that everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and of his family including food, clothing, housing and medical care and necessary social services which is conjoined with the right to life. A broad interpretation of Article 6 of ICCPR, every human being has the inherent right to life, embraces the freedom from extreme want and hunger that endanger human life. However, the ICESCR was the first UN document to recognize the right to food as a human right in Article 11 which held that the state parties to the present covenant recognize the right of everyone to an adequate standard of living for himself and his family including adequate food and recognized the fundamental right of everyone to be free from hunger. The Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights CESCR, further clarified the right to food by attaching General Comment 12 in 1999 which affirmed that the right to adequate food is indivisibly linked to the inherent dignity of the human person and is indispensable for the fulfillment of other human rights enshrined in the International Bill of Human Rights. The core content of the right to adequate food implies the availability of food in a quantity and quality sufficient to satisfy the dietary needs of individuals free from adverse substance and acceptable within a given culture. The accessibility of such food in ways that are sustainable and that do not interfere with the enjoyment of other human rights. The right to food has found reference in a wide variety of international statements, treaties, declarations, conventions, protocols and resolutions promulgated by the UN system pertaining to various issues of human rights. The expanding UN machinery has been supported by regional arrangements and domestic and international NGO advocacy like International Amnesty International, 
uh, Red Cross, Human Rights Watch, FIAN, etc., which are vital for standard setting, fact finding, awareness generation, sensitization, mobilization, promotion, propagation, and enforcement of human rights norm. A brief mention of international activism on right to food and nutrition security is pertinent here. A special assembly of 29 eminent personalities meeting at FAO headquarters on 14 March 1963 issued a historic manifesto called Man's Right to Freedom from Hunger, stating that freedom from hunger is man's first fundamental right. In order to achieve this, we suggest urgent and adequate national and international effort in which the governments and the peoples are associated. The Declaration on Social Progress and Development adopted in 1969 enunciated the elimination of hunger and malnutrition and the guarantee of the right to proper nutrition. The Universal Declaration on the Eradication of Hunger and Malnutrition adopted in 1974 asserted that every man, woman and child had the inalienable right to be free from hunger and malnutrition in order to develop fully and maintain their physical and mental faculties. The Cocoyac Declaration adopted in 1974 held that human beings have basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, health, education, any process of growth that does not lead to their fulfillment or even worse disrupts them is a travesty of the idea of development. The Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women adopted in 1979 notes that in situation of poverty, women have the least access to food, health, education, training and opportunities for employment and other needs. The Convention on the Rights of the Child adopted in 1989 resolved to ascertain the rights of the child to highest attainable standards of health by appropriate measures which include inter alia to combat diseases and malnutrition through the provision of adequate nutritious foods and provide material assistance and support programs particularly with regard to nutrition. The Bellagio Declaration on Overcoming Hunger in the 1990s adopted in 1989 highlighted the right to food of civilians during armed conflicts. International protection of civilian rights of food with a renewed interest in an international or regional convention for the sanctity of civilian food supplies and the safe passage of emergency food relief. The World Declaration on Nutrition adopted in 1992 recognized that the access to nutritionally adequate and safe food is a right of each individual and pledged to act in solidarity to ensure that freedom from hunger becomes a reality. The Vienna Declaration and Program of Action adopted in 1993 noted the right of everyone to a standard of living adequate for their health and well-being including food and affirmed that food should not be used as a tool for political pressure. The gathering momentum of the human rights movement and a rights-based approach to development resulted in the acceptance of the right to be free from hunger and the right to adequate food as essential human rights for all people everywhere. Denial to access of food is life-threatening, making it a human security concern. The 1994 Human Development Report launched the concept of human security, identifying food security as one of its seven pillars. The Rome Declaration on World Food Security adopted in 1996 reaffirmed the right of everyone to have access to safe and nutritious food consistent with the right to adequate food and the fundamental right of everyone to be free from hunger. The plan of action included the progressive realization of the right to adequate food for all. The International Alliance Against Hunger formed in 2002 reaffirmed the right of everyone to have access to safe and nutritious food and reiterated that food should not be used as an instrument for political and economic pressure. Jean Ziegler, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food 2000-2008 defined the right to food as the right to have regular, permanent and free access either directly or by means of financial purchases to quantitatively and qualitatively adequate and sufficient food corresponding to the cultural traditions of the people to which the consumers belong 
and which ensures a physical and mental, individual and collective, fulfilling and dignified life free of fear. Asserting food as a basic human right transforms the hungry from being mere passive recipient of charity from the dominant groups into right holders, which means that they can in principle claim that their rights to be fulfilled while an external party, primarily the state, becomes the corresponding duty bearer with obligation to help in the fulfillment of the right. The right to food constitutes a claim of the individual vis-a-vis -vis the state in which she resides and generates individual entitlements and related obligations potentially enforceable in courts of law. It encompasses elements of international humanitarian law prohibiting the use of food as weapon, the starvation of civilian as a method of combat in international and domestic armed conflicts, attacking or destroying civilian food stocks or water resources or forced displacement of civilian population in time of war, enjoining upon the belligerent parties in armed conflict to permit humanitarian access to impartial relief operations including food. However, no right can be seen in isolation or prioritized over other rights. Hence, right to food will be meaningless without a broad framework of right to nutrition, health, education, productive livelihood and rights of women and children. The right to food also has a qualitative dimension expressed in people's right to specific types of food that they are familiar with, reflecting certain traditional and cultural patterns of their consumption. Preserving the diversity in food sources and the rights of people to maintain their own food habits along with sufficient access to food is essential for nutritional, ecological and socio-cultural perspectives. Undoubtedly, human rights based approach has become an increasingly important rallying call in the global fight against hunger. The debate during 1970s focused on advancing higher food production to strengthen availability and stability of national and global food supply. Attention diverted to recognition of greater role and responsibility of state authorities as essential for prevention of hunger and promotion of nutritional well-being. In the 1980s, the understanding of the causes of hunger and malnutrition was broadened. It became clear that food insecurity was not caused by non-availability of food but due to poverty and lack of access to food. Food security agenda therefore expanded from instability and acute crisis to include the problem of chronic hunger and focus shifted to households and individuals linked to income and resources. Further, it was realized that food was only one component in a complex set of factors that determined human food security. Health and nutrition were linked with food intake and nutritional well-being which led to food gradually being included in the international human rights agenda. By the 1990s, the need was felt to pursue the human right to food beyond the technical and policy perspectives. The notion of food security evolved and diversified to become more encompassing and multi-layered. Attention shifted from international to national, to household to the individual as the unit of analysis, from the conventional panacea of food availability to recognition of food quality, safety and micronutrients and finally to non-food factors relevant for food security. The concept of right to food matured in an interactive process and found its way into the political development agenda through the UN system's standard setting and monitoring role along with innovative and performance by states operationalizing it within the national context. The right to food is part of a human rights system that is indivisible, consisting of a balance between freedom and demands, obligations by the state and duties of the individuals. While the individuals are the subjects or beneficiaries, the notion of human rights is intimately linked to the state, which should respect some limitations on its action and is obliged to actively fulfill human rights requirements. The conventional imperative of non-interference in the internal matters of sovereign states precluded any possibility of international supervision. 
this gave way to accommodating monitoring of states compliances with their obligation by the international community via the UN system. The proliferation of human rights instruments though aids in universalization does not automatically signal their actual implementation. They are mainly standard setting, their application ranging from making recommendations to adopting declarations, carrying marginal legal obligation and no means of enforcement. The mere existence of the normative framework of the right to food does not ensure protection of the rights of protection of the rights or guarantee people's entitlement and accessibility to adequate food. Nevertheless, it is useful to provide clear benchmarks for monitoring and evaluation to which states and international institutions can be held accountable to. The most crucial task is to specify the internal and external obligations of states and that of the international community. Elaboration of the normative content of the right to food must be substantiated with establishment of an effective supervisory mechanism for, with, for its implementation. Through international actors, states and international institutions have progressively embraced many normative standards for right to food, their implementation frequently falls short of policy imperative as will be discussed in the next part of the lecture.